Welcome everyone, it's Cannabis News. I'm your host, Joe Claire. It's March 11th, 2020. The show, as always, presented to you by the Marijuana Times. Marijuanatimes.org is where you can find us. Click the video tab to find this show. A lot of great articles as well from a ton of great writers. Marijuanatimes.org. Today we're talking about Virginia lawmakers choosing decriminalization instead of the more appropriate legalization. Also, Illinois, uh, customers in Illinois buying a good amount of marijuana per day. Just how much? We have to wait and find out. So, calling the broadcast biz a tease. Also, the Ohio Attorney General has rejected a petition uh, to legalize adult use marijuana in Ohio. All of that coming up. But first, of course, cannabis news is brought to you by NatureSide. Nature-Side.com and their organic, all natural pesticides grow safe and poison free with NatureSide. Don't use harmful chemicals or banned pesticides. Don't use yucky stuff on things that people are going to be ingesting. Use Nature Side instead. Nature-Side.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News. Thank you, Nature Side, for your continued support. Now well over 600 episodes. Go check them out, Nature-Side.com. This first story by Julia Granowitz at MarijuanaTimes.org. Virginia lawmakers choose decriminalization instead of legalization for now. Um, it's basically uh, both... Parts of the Virginia legislature, the House, in a vote uh, 56 to 36, and 27 to 12 in the Senate, the bill to decriminalize marijuana, according to Senator Adam Eben, a Democrat from Alexandria, that quote, this means close to 30,000 people a year will no longer be labeled as criminals and no longer will suffer the negative repercussions of a criminal conviction. Uh, currently, the penalty for possession of a half ounce or less of marijuana in the state of Virginia is 30 days in jail in addition to a $500 fine. The bill is signed into law, which Governor Northam seems to be supportive and has expressed support, at least for an earlier version of the bill. Uh, the fine would be significantly reduced from $500 to $25 for a possession of up to an ounce on the first offense. It would also remove, jail, remove the jail time entirely. Obviously, as Julia points out, this is a good first step. Decriminalization is often a step that Lawmakers will settle on when they don't want to go for full legalization, and it, it's it's a step in the right direction. Of course, it lengthens the amount of time before legalization becomes a thing. But in a state like Virginia, uh, it's pretty good uh, for now. And you got to all you can do with this is keep moving forward. And decriminalization is all you can get. That's what you got to get. And you try to build on that. Excuse me. Try to build on that as time goes on. And I mean, would it be great if we didn't have to go through that step and just go right to legalization? Of course. But, you know, I often say what there's a huge difference between what is and what should be, and people need to focus more on what is and less on what should be. Obviously, both are important, but if you're just thinking about what should be and wringing your hands over, well, we couldn't get this, we couldn't get that, well, get something. Get something. Move forward. Keep people out of jail. And that's what they're doing in Virginia, according to Jen Michelle Padini. Executive Director of Virginia Normal. This is an enormous victory for Virginians, a supermajority of, who, of whom have for many years opposed the continued criminalization of marijuana possession. So there you go. Decriminalization should be coming uh, in short order, if you will. That's a good timetable in short order. I don't know. I just, this is what I said. Hey, don't quote me on that. I have no idea. But the governor seems supportive. He should sign it, and they will go from there. With the criminalization in Virginia, this next story is from Leafly.com. Illinois sells $1 million in legal cannabis per day. That's right. $1 million. No, I'm not going to do a, a uh, Dr. Evil impression. I could. And you'd be blown away. But I'm not. <laughs> Just two months into adult use legalization, and Illinois dispensaries are selling more than $1 million of legal cannabis per day. Numbers based off revenue from steep taxes on illegal sales. Of course, marijuana sales started on January 1st, 2020, and tens of thousands of state residents and tourists braved the freezing pre-dawn temperatures in hour-long lines to smoke a piece of state history. Long lines continued. Of course, we've talked about the shortages and the, the shorter hours and the limits on recreational marijuana and such that have uh, been the norm for a lot of dispensaries in Illinois. Uh, as David points out, some stores closed to recreational customers but kept serving medical marijuana patients. Um, so things are they're moving along. 
in Illinois. As we've seen in a lot of other states, there's, there's the shortages and the long lines and the high prices. And all that stuff is going to be there until there's enough supply. That's the key to everything is enough supply of marijuana to bring down those prices and really make legal cannabis and the legal cannabis industry an actual competitor for the black market where it's not in many places right now in the United States or Canada for that matter. Uh, he goes through a lot of the taxes, heavy taxes in, in Illinois, which is one of the reasons that prices stay high and people stay with the black market. Obviously, something we've talked about many, many times before. But, uh, you know, people are buying a lot of marijuana because, as I've pointed out, and again, I didn't, it's not an original thought. This is not the concept that I came up with. It's been out there for a while. People like to buy marijuana. They like to buy it. They like to consume it, get the effects from it. It's, uh, I don't know. I mean, if, if that wasn't the case, then I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have a job. I'd be doing something else. Not marijuana related. <laughs> but I am because people like marijuana. That's right. It's the last story. Well, some people like marijuana. The, uh, the Attorney General of Ohio is not a fan. <laughs> 10TV.com. Ohio Attorney General rejects petition language for recreational marijuana issue. The Ohio Attorney General said Tuesday he has rejected the wording on a petition seeking to have voters decide in November whether to legalize recreational marijuana in the state. Attorney General Dave Yost said the summary language of the petition fails to include, quote, findings and declarations that are listed in the proposed constitutional amendment. Uh, backers can resubmit revised petition language after gathering another thousand signatures. The deadline for getting a constitutional amendment on the November ballot is July 1st. they got to get about 443,000 signatures uh, to get it on the ballot before July 1st. That's less than four months from now. They still don't have the petition language uh, approved. There's not a lot of details other than a couple of the backers of this and kind of some of the, the broad strokes of what it will entail. But there's been, that I've seen, there's been no financial uh, info disclosed at all. And it's going to take millions of dollars. To do this, even to get it on the ballot, it's going to take millions of dollars, and then maybe, maybe millions more in the campaign. But to get professional signature gatherers to go out, uh, especially considering you know uh, the impact the coronavirus is having uh, in the United States right now, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money and not a lot of time to get that many valid signatures. And that's just the first part, as I said. You get it on the ballot, then you got to battle to win which uh, if issue three in 2015 in Ohio taught us anything with its 30-point loss, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a tough hill to climb. Obviously, the backers of this petition feel that they've made improvements. You know, the monopoly charges won't stick. and won't be just you know, a certain amount of growers or whatever. It's more inclusive, I guess, or more wide open, or however you want to put it, with allowing uh, growers and such. But, again, I don't know any of the financial details unless they have a few million dollars right now to get going after they finally get this language approved. I don't see how it's going to happen, but uh, I hope it does. I live right across the river from Ohio. I would love to go over to Ohio and buy some legal marijuana and take videos and show you all, and that would be great. But where's the money? And I don't want to harp. I don't mean to harp on that, but it's there's nothing matters without the, the money to get those signatures, especially because of the, the short time frame. Why the time frame is so short, I don't know. Why didn't they start working on this last year? I, I'm not privy to the inside workings of, of this particular group. So we'll see in the coming months what happens, what kind of details we can get. We'll cover all of those stories and more right here on Cannabis News five days a week. Search us out on YouTube, search the Marijuana Times. Make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when a new episode has dropped. Of course, we're on Vimeo as well and Apple Podcasts for the audio version. Thank you to Nature Side, nature-side.com and their organic all natural pesticides. Thanks to all of you for watching and listening and continuing to spread the truth about cannabis with this show. Please continue to do so, and we'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. <laughs>